Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm finally back in the craft room, you guys. I'm working on my, I think it's 13. Let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right. So I'm working on my stepping stone, and this is the first time I'm using this mesh. And this is not the sticky, sticky type of mesh, because there is a sticky back one that evidently you can just stick your tiles to. But I'm going to start today. I've got my set up here. See, look, that just moved. But I taped, I taped my sketch down to this board so that I can move it if I need to move it. Then I put plastic wrap. So this is just plastic wrap, you know, kitchen plastic wrap, and it's kind of folded there. And I taped that down to the board too. But this, and then I put the mesh, and I didn't quite, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to move all these off. I just wanted to kind of get my placement and see. Um, I have a stepping stone, it's over there, and <coughs> I kind of, there's going to be a little bit of room on the edge. I'm not going right out to the edge, but if I put 13, right, is that what I said? Oh God, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yes, 13. And then I'm just going to space them evenly. And I'm working with Weld Bond um, because I can glue with the Weld Bond, get the mosaic kind of finished. And then, because it's going to be outside, I will use um, thin set mortar. So that's like concrete to actually adhere it <clears throat> to the stepping stone. So the, the glue is just holding it to the mesh. The thin set's going to hold it to the stone. So this is my first one I've ever done, but I'm looking forward to it, and I think it's going to be fantastic. And I'm just going to go like this. <laughs> I don't know if I should have watched a few more videos to see how people actually do it, but this is what I'm doing. And then I'm going to put 13, kind of, I think, close to the edge. Oh, that has a little chip on it. Two, three, these tiles, three, four, let me just get this done. <laughs> Five, see, look, like I don't even know how much of that glue is going to, I should have probably just done a straight line. I think enough. Uh, what is that? Five, six, seven. It's got a little chip too, a couple of them. Eight. These tiles are from either Home Depot or um, Lowe's. And I just want to get them on here because then I'm going to have to space them. So that they fit from end to end but I'm pretty sure I bought these in a sheet like a you know like you would use for your house um, years ago I don't even remember all right so this is my line that I drew to kind of give me I think it was an inch and these aren't an inch so I'm just gonna hopefully evenly space these uh, straighten them out a little I can actually turn this. See, that was another reason I wanted to glue it to something that I could move. Um, now, I don't know if you're still, I'm still in the shot anymore because I did that, but I can see much better. <laughs> I like it. All right. I think that's pretty decent. If it's a little wonky, I'm not really concerned because it is for me. This is Kiwi. She's my birdie that I, she passed away. And I'm just going to, this is kind of like her little headstone mosaic. I'm just going to make my zigzag go a little smaller. These tiles also have like a, a ridge on the back. I'll show you. They have this, so to cut them is annoying. It goes in, out, in, out, in, out, and um, but it it grips it grips the adhesive better that way. I'm gonna start, and I'm not worrying about how which ones have a lot of copper and which way the copper is going. I'm not really worrying about any of that, which I guess could play into a design if you were 
you know, trying to keep the flow going a certain way, but I'm just putting them on. Let's see. Nine, ten, eleven. I need two more to fit in here. And then I will space them. And you know, look, this is my first attempt, but the reason you put the foil, the, not the foil, the plastic wrap is so that I can, once it's all glued, the glue won't be stuck to the sub this here. It'll just be stuck to the plastic wrap and it'll pull off. That is the theory anyway. I've never done it yet. It's my first time working with the mesh, but I really like the idea, like I said, of being able to move this around without having to move the stepping stone itself. Because I have a small craft room. I don't have a huge, a lot of table space that I can just leave projects out and kind of hit them up when I want to and move around. Sometimes I like to do something else on my desk. I do have shelves that I can then put this on. This will fit right on the shelves. Oh, and I got a fish tank, you guys. So I'm gonna share that with you. Um, doing really good. I know I'm not in the craft room as much, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm finding serenity in other places these days, you know? So, uh, learning new stuff about myself. You know, those of you who watch my channel, you know, I'm on a journey of self-discovery. <laughs> Anywho, uh, so went to dinner last night with an old friend from 30 years ago. It was so nice to see her and uh, went to a restaurant that I had never been to that's local because I isolate. I have not lived a life of adventure. I have lived a crafty life and I've enjoyed it don't get me wrong uh oh this might be 13 let's see so I'm gonna have to space these out a bit more because let's see actually that one is right at this line okay good so not too much just a little there we go <clears throat> I'm usually pretty good at eyeballing like a straight line and this mesh could could be a little wonky but I'll look at it at the end and see I think it's fine and boom it's working pretty quick <laughs> I, I found this in my neighborhood so I have another rock that I want to do I've got them all outside all the rocks that I did are now outside in the mulch so yeah, I got a fish tank. So this is, well, excuse me, this is the adhesive I'm using. It's a very strong white glue. I've used it on all my indoor mosaics. Um, but when you're working with, when you want to put something outside, it's preferable to use a water resistant, like a waterproof um, glue adhesive because the weather you know the weather the Sun all that stuff this would just break down outside but if you're doing an inside mosaic it's perfect it's very easy cleanup um, water-based easy to control that's that silicone boy I've been working with that on my rocks and I try I like this this I got this bottle from his name is David Jarvanen I'm pretty sure I took a class um, on, what is the name of it? I think it's called Mosaics Online. And I did my sugar skull on glass, on a frame. Anywho, he used that. So when I ordered my um, supplies, which you don't have to order from him, it wasn't part of the curriculum, but uh, I wanted it because I liked how easy, because otherwise I'm using this or I was putting out a puddle and then using a brush, like a paint, an old paint brush to kind of spread the glue. And that just makes it easier. The same thing with the silicone. I ended up getting these little syringes and filling this, filling 
a syringe with silicone and then it comes out of a much smaller hole and it's just easier to um, manage. All right, I think we're in the home stretch. So that's it. I'm going to show you my fish tank. I'll introduce you to Blue. I got a betta fish. I think we probably had a betta fish when my kids were little. Um, didn't do much research about it. It was probably pre-Google <laughs> and pre-YouTube. Pre oh dear, I went too far over. I'm going to move these up. But I did a lot more research this time. And betta fish, oh, they're so cool. Um, uh, he's in a 10-gallon tank. I did get a male. They're called Japanese fighter fish. All right, so I'm just going to look at this head on. Kind of, I mean, it's good enough for me. Then I'm going to put my mosaic in here. So this is just the frame, and I figured that was a good way to start. It's kind of distracting because the glass has color on it, but I'm going to start cutting glass and, and make my kiwi. And then I'm going to put her name. I have these little, um, where are they? They were on my desk. These. I'm just going to use these, I think. The last video I shared, I think I cut these to make her name just out of these. So maybe I'll glue them down um, today. But I want to make sure uh, I have background glass. So I'm going to do her. I'm probably going to use stained glass. So these are going to definitely poke up. So in other words, stained glass is not as thick as this, even these tiles. But stained glass is definitely even thinner sometimes. So this is much, it's going to be raised up in other words. So if you were stepping on this, you would feel that it, it changed levelness type thing. That being said, this is not going to be used to step on necessarily. It's just in a flower bed off to the side as a memorial for kiwi. But if, if you were really actually making a stone that you wanted to step on in your garden, use as a path, it might be better to have all of your, uh, your tesserae, tesserae um, one type so that it wasn't like a mixed media all bumpy thing. I know you don't want people to trip, in other words, but... Um, so the only so I am going to be able to do this a little more mixed media like I had pulled these stars and I have a heart I have one heart they're in blue and this is all I had in my stash um, because I'm doing a blue background but I thought the stars would be cool because she's in heaven ish you know she's in the sky she's in her forever she's in flight anyway um, so those are a little bit different too, um, playing around with it. And then the flowers, maybe I'll put a round gem, like not, uh, I don't have any on my desk at the moment. But those ones that we use for uh, inside of a vase, I could use for the centers of my flowers. We'll see. And then maybe I could even use um, some leaf shape tiles. We'll see, but I'll get back to you. All right, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away. And I'm going to come back with a different video about my new betta fish. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching.